get what you need, y'all. All right, 1979, the end of the poster, the end of the era. We have come to the end of our road. This is the end of the journey of the yellow brick road of all these great grooves, but no, by no means the end of all the great grooves there are. We just touched upon some of the really fantastic beats of the, of the, of the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. But, I mean, my two books are a monstrous study in all of the history of all these grooves, and, and they fill up two books because there's just so much great music from these periods. Anyway, this is called Bustin' Loose, a group called Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, and the drummer on here was a guy named Ricky Wellman. First of all, this was a particular sound called the go-go sound. G-O space G-O, go-go. It's called go-go music. It was regional R&B music that really existed only in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. Uh, if you had never been to that area, you would never really know what go-go music was. But this tune put the go-go sound on the map. What's interesting this is if you go back and check out any of the great Chuck Brown and the Soul Searcher records, this really isn't the actual groove that was played over and over that was kind of defined as the go-go groove, which is more of like a halftime shuffle kind of a thing. But this was a go-go artist with the go-go sound that, that made it popular. But Bustin' Loose featured Ricky Wellman on the drums, and it had this, uh, this beautifully fat fill. It had a very syncopated, funky bass drum part. Great bass drum sound on the recording. Um, Go-Go music was uh, very percussive. It always had like a cowbell guy playing and congas and shakers and sometimes uh, Rototom was like a big part of the of the Go-Go uh, ensemble, like in a percussion ensemble. And it's it, this tune was another one of those tunes. I, I learned this tune when I was uh, you know, 1979, you know, when I loved to go to clubs and meet girls and dance, and this tune would always come out on the dance floor. And I would just immediately want to go out there and dance. I was like, yeah, whatever this is, I'm going to try to be cool while I'm doing it, because this, this makes me feel cool. I love the groove. Um, and this time I was also a DJ, and this is another one of those records that I would spin. So if I put, you know, Bust and Loose on, and I put uh, Got to Be Real on back to back, I could keep the people dancing for about 12 minutes however long those two tunes were together. And uh, that was your job as a DJ, was to keep people dancing so they got really sweaty and hot and then they'd go buy drinks. You know, and that was the mark, that was the mark of a good DJ, is how many drinks did they sell because of the, the records you chose. Because if you didn't make them dance and get all hot and sweaty and want to buy stuff, you weren't a good DJ. Unfortunately, that's how they measured it. But I loved uh, dancing and I loved to see people dance and I loved the power and the ability to, of a groove to make people just lose their mind. You put a tune on, all of a sudden you could you could control a whole room, and every every head would be going like this. Uh, really cool hi hat opening on the part. Basically an eighth note eighth note kind of oriented groove, but the whole thing has definitely got the swung feel in it. Has a slight swing to that kick drum part. It's not straight, and that's because these guys again we're all coming from swung kinds of things. In fact, later on, Ricky Wellman went on to play with Miles Davis in the mid 80s and was a part of one of his last bands. Miles uh, liked the groove so much, liked the go-go groove, and Ricky's playing so much, that he said, I want to have that, that new sound, that, that new sound those guys are doing. And uh, later I saw, and later in, in the day, I, I, I began to play with Bobby Brown, the new edition. And they were kind of an extension of that swing meets funk era, which became called hip hop. And I remember watching Miles Davis on uh, on the Arsenio Hall show, and uh, Arsenio was asking Miles, you know, what 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 groups do you like and what beats interest you? And I remember I got real excited when he said, "Man, I love that Bobby Brown stuff. I love that beat and I love that that new hip hop thing." And but he'd already started it with 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 his stuff, but he was really in, he 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 saw that jazz was going to this hip-hop thing where it still was the roots of jazz but now cats are doing it in this funky more commercial way and he dug it and he hired Ricky to be in his band and uh, Ricky played on some great live stuff with him but this is this song is so important because this ushered in really a completely new sound which began the hip-hop thing and uh, and also it was really kind of the last era of recordings that featured all live musicians because once the hip-hop era became in full effect 
it became more more stuff began to be programmed once the Lynn drum machine came out and so you had you had the last of the Mohicans the last era that was like James Brown where it was just all cats playing live at the same time then that drum machine came and they began to program those sort of halftime shuffle hip-hop type grooves but it all started from this Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers sound out of DC and once this became a hit everybody started to well who is this Chuck Brown guy and what is this sound and just like things evolve you know people began to hear it in New York and and that started the whole hip-hop craze and the rap thing and uh, it was pretty cool stuff Chuck would take old school jazz tunes, you know, uh, Stormy, Stormy Monday, and ain't uh, it ain't don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. He'd take those kinds of tunes, Family Affair by Sign of the Family Stone, and just do them hip hop, do them uh, uh, go go style, and the go go beat was more like. It was like a halftime kind of shuffle but not necessarily like with all the ghost notes you would have heard in a Bernard Purdy home at last kind of a groove, but it still had that shuffle up here, backbeat, and he played a million tunes, but with that same beat, and it was called go-go because when they'd play live, the beat would go-go on and on and on. It was just one tune segueing into another, like a non-stop medley, but the drum groove was always with lots of cool hi-hat openings, very tricky, broken-up triplets and cool uh, hi-hat barks, and it was, it was really cool. So you got to check out the Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the series. Go back and buy the recording of each one of these songs. Uh, buy the books from my commandments series if you've liked any of this. Uh, the first one's the commandments of R&B drumming, a comprehensive guide to soul, funk, and hip hop. The second one is the commandments of early rhythm and blues drumming that uh, Daniel Glass and I did together, and that covers all the early periods of of the development of rhythm and blues from the from the 50s that that led to rock and roll. It's a fantastic book. And then I have my DVD, uh, The Commandments of R&B Drumming, three hours long, and also the Play Along book, which features a lot of great R&B tunes recorded with some legendary musicians, uh, where you can play along to those tunes, and you can also slow those tunes down with a new type of program that the book comes with, uh, which is great for learning. When you want to learn something, but the tune's too fast for where you're currently able to play it, you can slow the tune down. You can also speed it up. So a lot of good stuff out there. It's been a pleasure to do this uh, with Vic Firth. I'd like to thank the Vic Firth Company for putting up my drumstick and uh, being dedicated to education and, and the spirit of excellence in which they do everything. And hopefully you guys, if anything, you'll be inspired. Uh, I've been inspired by all of these grooves, by all of these artists, by all of these drummers, by all of their stories. And uh, every fragment of piece of, of them is in me. And hopefully it'll now be in you and then you'll do something new with it too. So thank you very much. Take care and God bless. <laughs>